Our daily Bible reading and devotion for April 10th. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If many disciples were pressed, it might be admitted that one of our greatest deficit lies in our prayer life. It may be that we simply don't spend the time we should in prayer. Perhaps it is the fervency is, that is lacking. Maybe we pray but not really believing. Many people of great faith share a common thread, which is a full prayer life. It is admirable that the disciples of Jesus, whom we do not know the name of, ask him to teach them to pray. His reference is to John the Baptist and his disciples that were taught by him. It may be that the disciple had noticed the way in which Jesus prayed, or the frequency of his prayers, or that before decisions were made, he prayed, or that Jesus was known to pray all night. Whatever the reason, this disciple found something desirable in this. From here, Jesus gives us what is commonly known as the Lord Prayer. It's more accurate to note that it is the model prayer he gives us. Nonetheless, we find in, in its conciseness much of what our prayers should consist of. Praise, providence, protection, and penitence. This model may be offered in a matter of a minute or less. How is it then that one should spend hours in prayer? Praise of the Father alone would press us for little other time were we to consider his mighty works. We find over and over in the book of Psalms how the praise of the Father reaches greater heights seemingly with each psalm. Consider Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all stars of light. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Still, we find much more in petitions, supplications, and appeals. So much so that when considering all these, we have barely touched the hem of the garment in thanksgiving as well. Jesus' disciples was wise to seek the teaching of the Master himself. We too will be wise to petition him from whom all blessings flow. Question of the day, are you satisfied with your prayer life? A thought to meditate on this day. It has been said by those who are the busiest that they accomplish so much more by virtue of time spent in prayer. And those are our thoughts for April 10th.